There's people that came to me and said, LeBron, you got to do what makes you happy. I thought about that and I was like, yeah, I think so. I, I, I think it's about time. And then I thought about it and said, hell no. I'm going to do what makes my city and my state happy. And that's why I came back. I love you. I'm back. Mic drop. That was at the University of Akron over the weekend. King James seems adamant he's staying home. Shannon, were you surprised that LeBron decided to go back to Cleveland? I was shocked. And Skip, I've heard you say so many times how big a fan and how much you love Michael Jordan. That's how much I love LeBron James. Considering what Daniel Gilbert said about LeBron in his leaving, how he called him classless, how he said he quit, how he called him disloyal, self-anointed king, and seeing how outspoken LeBron was when it was revealed what Donald Sterling said. So I'm thinking to myself, and I think a lot of people were thinking, if Daniel Gilbert can take pen to paper and email this out, what did he say about LeBron in private that didn't get out? In the process of him going back, I tweeted, LeBron James is a bigger man than I can ever be. Hmm. Because as an athlete, all you can hang your hat on, Stephen and Skip, is that I gave it everything I had every time I went out there in my arena or on the field. And if somebody says, you can call me classless, you can call me dishonest, you can call me disloyal, you can say I'm, a, I'm obnoxious, but don't say I quit. Hmm. Because if you said I quit, not only did you say I quit on you, mm -hmm. but I quit on my teammates. Yep. I always tell guys, I say, you play for three things. And if you play for them in this order, success, fame, adulation will come. You play for your teammates' respect. Mm -hmm. You play for your coach's trust. And you play for the fans' appreciation. If you do those things in that order, money, fame, adulation, praise will come. He said he wanted to go back and be in his community. I'm a firm believer that you can do a lot for your community and still not live in your community. Mm -hmm. Bill Gates gives billions of dollars to Africa. He doesn't live in Africa, but he still does a lot for the city, for, for, the, mm -hmm. for the continent. I understand that. But it means something to him to be in Akron, to raise his family in Akron. It means something for the state of Ohio that he got an opportunity sure. to come back. And so because he's happy, I'm extremely happy. But I'm shocked because if my owner had said that about me, we can't pick up, we can't pick up the, he can't even pick up the phone and call me. Because my grandmother used to always say, there are three types of people that will tell you the truth. Kids, drunks, and angry people. <laughs> and maybe two of the three, he was absolutely. He was angry, and he was very childish. Now, I don't want to get into speculation or innuendo about whether or not he was drinking that night, but he was probably two of the three, Skip. You buying? No. Um, I understand where you're coming from. You know, I don't blame anybody for thinking the way that you're thinking. My attitude is, is that I would not have forgiven Dan Gilbert either. Uh, to say that I quit, to call me classless, and some of the things that he said, it would have been very difficult for me to let that go. Uh, Dan Gilbert's a grown man. He does a lot of great, great things in the city of Detroit, state of Michigan, mm -hmm. which is, you know, where right. he's connected to. Um, there's a lot of people out there that will speak to his philanthropy, uh, his generosity, his business savviness, et cetera. Uh, but in this particular instance, he came along as incredibly petulant, vindictive, um, and vicious because what he said about LeBron was clearly beyond the pale. With that being said, let's give LeBron credit for being accountable because the one thing that I don't believe he mentioned in deciding to go back to Cleveland, talking about the love for the city and, you know, himself, his family, et cetera, et cetera. LeBron left out the part about him feeling the need to be culpable, maybe. LeBron James was not just paid what he was paid and he earned every penny and he was worth more than he was getting paid, but the CBA wouldn't allow him to get so much. But Dan Gilbert 
did extend himself. The practice facility near the home in Akron. Uh, the, the level of, of Carl Blanche treatment he gave to LeBron and is in a circle. There were things that he did to extend himself that he deserved a simple phone call if you're leaving him. He didn't deserve, as much as I have criticized Dan Gilbert, and I stand by every criti critical word I've said about him, he didn't deserve to find out that you were going to South Beach on television like everybody else. And when you do something like that, sometimes, you know, you might have initiated, you know, his reaction. And so LeBron accepting accountability for that is a very, very big thing. And I think that that has to be brought to light. LeBron James has, you know, tacitly or otherwise recognized that there are things that he could have been different, that he could have done differently. Agreed. So did his crew. And those are great, the great guys, Randy and mm -hmm. Maverick and Richard. They're great guys, man. And they're doing a lot of good things. And they ain't just LeBron's boys. They're doing their own thing. And he facilitated them being in a position to do their own thing. But give them credit where credit is due. When we live in a nation and we're looking at black youth and some of the problems that, they had, that, that we have as a community. And here you got guys that obviously have a connection and a friendship with LeBron, but they used it to springboard themselves and are doing their own thing. And mm -hmm. they deserve a lot of credit for that. But at the same time, there were times where they could have done things differently. You do get to a point where you connected and representing the best player in the world and one of the most well-recognized and well-renowned athletes in the world, you can feel yourself a little bit too. And so all of these things come into consideration. I can tell you right now, the level of maturity that you'd witness from all of them right now wasn't necessarily apparent then. Four years ago. And that's what I think we're seeing right now. I think that's what has reached fruition. Still doesn't absolve Dan Gilbert. Please don't get me wrong. Right. But it's not about him. It's about you, your maturation process, and ultimately what makes you happy, being surrounded. You got a lot of people, for example, we mm -hmm. love L.A., but a lot of people look at the city of L.A., you know, that Hollywood environment, right. and they feel like stuff is fake. Mm -hmm. You look at Miami, that's, a, that's like a connection, that's like the, that's like the, step, the little stepsister of Hollywood, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of how things can seem fake at times, depending on what, it, what, what place mm -hmm. you go. But in Cleveland, it's home. Yeah. You know, it's blue, it's your roots. And you got that, man. Uh, Dan Gilbert does it way more than that. So does you're, you're saying that LeBron was somewhat at fault. Yes, i always said that. For angering that owner to the point that he hit sin that night, right? To some degree, yes, Skip, because the man didn't just pay you. He was extending himself and capitulating to a lot of different things because LeBron was approaching free agency. Mm -hmm. And it's one of them, this is the way I would put it, last thing I'm going to say. Let's just say for sake of argument, just a hypothetical situation. I know I'm leaving, but I don't tell you. Right. But everything you throw my way, I smile in your face and I just take and I take and I take. And then all of a sudden you leave me anyway. In the back of your mind, if not the forefront of your mind, what you're asking yourself is, did I need to take? Did I need to do that? You know, I'm saying if you're Dan Gilbert, you're like, did they need to do that? If you, if you knew you were leaving, you know, did you have to exploit and that's what I'm trying to say. And I don't want to use that in, you know, in, a, in the most negative light because I'm certainly not accusing LeBron of doing that. I'm just saying you kind of knew you were on your way out. And when Dan Gilbert alluded to folks, you know, him quitting, Dan Gilbert's the owner. You said that because that's what you were being told. Because the people that were smiling in LeBron James' face were betraying him and his friends and his family behind his back. And Dan Gilbert was... Mm -hmm. sitting there throwing stuff at you anyway. So, again, this fought on both sides, and I can see it. Skip, before you go, let me say this. Sure. Just remember, I, and I tell guys this all the time, I even tell my kids, there are two things you can never get back. Words spoken and deeds done. You can apologize, you can throw a lot of money at them, but people will always remember what you said, mm -hmm. and they'll always remember what you did. Mm -hmm. I'm with Shannon on this, because you know Initially, I, I wasn't. I was dumbfounded. I thought there was no chance that LeBron would go back to Cleveland because of that Q word that you brought up, the quit word. Yeah. I thought that bridge got burned to the ground. And furthermore, and I don't want to. This is all water under a bridge that got burned. But 
I thought he and D. Wade had such a deep bond that Dwayne was there for LeBron when LeBron struggled through that 2011 finals. And I thought LeBron would want to be there for Dwayne as he tried to bounce back next year. And I believe he will. And I thought the three of them had a little bit of a pact. And when Pat Riley did, quote unquote, call out LeBron in that little State of the Union that he gave, I thought LeBron would want to answer the challenge of a former great coach and a great GM who made the case that, hey, all the great ones had playoff disasters and disappointments. And they all bounced back and won again. And he challenged LeBron, you, you, don't find the first door and run through it. Come back here next year and we will get it right back together and we will do this again. I thought LeBron would take the challenge because when I looked at what was left in Cleveland, 33 and 49 last year, lost Ding, lost C.J. Miles, lost too many key pieces from a team that added an Andrew Wiggins. I, I'm not buying yet. So I'm saying, why would you go home to that? Then now I hear that our Brian Windhorse has indicated maybe this love deal was kind of on the table already before he made his new decision to go back. And then all of a sudden I start to realize Maybe LeBron James is going to run the franchise. He, he seems to basically be ignoring the owner who is now the GM. He ignores the in-name only GM. He ignored the new head coach because they just met last week for the first time. But they were texting from the time he okay, signed. But, but again, I, okay, I'm not buying it. I'm not, I, I think LeBron, that became irrelevant to LeBron, who is going to be the GM or the coach of this team. That he finally decided, nope, I'm going to go home. And PR-wise... This country has embraced LeBron for, quote, unquote, going home. Yeah. So that trumps everything. Then all bets are off. Uh, did, did he leave Dwayne high and dry in Miami? I believe he did. I don't believe so. Okay, well, I do. And I think that Dwayne, in his heart of hearts, privately, is not pleased with this. But that's okay. That's okay. He, I like it that Dwayne's going to be on a mission listen, to, to bounce listen, back next a, a year. A couple of things, a couple of things. Number one, you didn't go there to be in Miami forever. It was an experiment that you were willing to partake with two of your boys in Chris mm -hmm. Bosh and Dwayne Wade. Dwayne Wade is always the lifer for the Miami Heat. LeBron James never claimed to be, never claimed he intended to be. So, and Dwayne Wade is a highly intelligent brother who knows better. So he may not have liked the fact that LeBron left, but at the same time, he doesn't feel like he's been left high and dry because that would imply LeBron made promises. And if you know anything about LeBron, LeBron doesn't make promises. One of the things that LeBron does is that he's incredibly elusive. He's not going to make those promises, not to people outside of his family and his boys. And I've always told you, no matter how tight he is and cool he is with D-Wade, I got news for you. Chris Paul is the godfather of his son, not Dwayne Wade. You know, you got other friends, too. Mm -hmm. You're tight with them. You love them. But at the same time, are they a really a member of your inner circle? I would make a legitimate argument to you that despite the fact that he's been a teammate of D-Wade's and big brothers and, and a brother to him for the four years, mm -hmm. that they still ain't tighter than he is with Chris Paul. So let's be clear about that. Number two. That might be news to Dwayne. No, I don't think it is because it's not a knock against Dwayne. Mm. It's just a look, look, I got cats I went to school with. I went to college with. But you know what? My man Pooley that doesn't date mm -hmm. women that weighs less than 250 pounds. <laughs> My man Pooley that I never hang out with, that is blue collar to the core, whatever. I don't care if I see him once a year. Mm -hmm. There will never in life be a greater friend to me mm -hmm. than my boy Pooley. But that doesn't mean I don't love other people, that we ain't tight, that we don't hang out with, but they ain't Pooley. And mm -hmm. I never hang with Pooley because no one will ever eclipse Pooley. Gonna okay. Have to cut you off, Stephen A. So, boy, we go ahead. We're gonna have to go to break here. We'll continue this in a second. <laughs> Coming up, uh, we're talking Skip's Cowboys again. But first, check again? out again. Again, first though, we got the a Cowboys. second Instagram debate on the expectations in Big D. Check it out. These Dallas Cowboys stink. It's just that simple. I have finally had enough. I think that my offensive line just might be the best offensive line in the entire league. But I'm telling you, their defense is horrid. It's embarrassing.